Hi, right, good evening. I know you're all very keen to um, get to the beer point of the, the festival. I hopefully most of you have already started. So thank you very much for your patience and uh, your time. It's really appreciated. There's a lot of very interesting things to see. Um, this is a little bit of a setup, uh, in all honesty, um, which is um, I'm interviewing these three, um, Hi. which will be great. Yeah. Um, but I also co-founded this company. So I'm going to try and explain, I guess, how we've come to be here. Um, and these guys are going to talk about what they're up to now I'm not there, which is they've been massively more successful since I left, which is um, always a great sign. So why don't we start with introductions. Um, I'm Ben. I'm Bryce. I'm Joe. I'm Mike. Hey. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. I kind of like this. It's kind of it's sort of <laughs> it's pathetic nice, it's applause. Nice. It's nice, isn't it? It's good. It makes you feel homely. We're used to it. We're from we here. are homely. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So, what is it that you do apart from grow facial hair? <laughs> so, uh, we run uh, weekly, monthly, quarterly events for the startup community. Uh, we started in London and now it runs in a whole bunch of different places, in a, in a nutshell. Anyone want to expand on that? That didn't have any meaning in it at all. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> so, we started, um, I guess, nearly two and a half years ago mm. um, in, the, in the London startup scene. We, we all met completely randomly um, at a tweet up when people used to do those, if you remember those. Um, and got a bit drunk and the event was shit. And we thought, um, there's not a lot going on actually in London at the time. It was all a bit fragmented, wasn't it? Yeah, it's all spread out. We thought we could do something better. Um, so, so maybe paint that picture to the, to the people because I'm sure there's many people from European countries here who are in that similar sort of state. So yeah. what was it like sort of two and a half years ago in London? It was fragmented, I think. Mm. We you had, said that. We had a, yeah, we had a case <laughs> of sort of, for us when we, we started out, it was either sort of a regular 10 pound meetups where you sat on the floor and bought your own beers and listened to someone talk or it was sort of, very pricey kind of conferences which we couldn't really afford. So um, we literally only ever set out to run an event I think we'd want to go to, which was meant to be a, a barbecue in a park for 20 people. And 120 people showed up and it was illegal to barbecue in the Royal Parks in England, who knew that? Um, so we had to move to a pub and, um, and that was how our first event, which is called Digital Sizzle, was born. Um, Around that time, we, um, Michael Acton Smith from Mind Candy had just started a thing called Silicon Drinkabout, which was a Friday night beers for startups. Uh, he came, he approached us and said he'd sort of seen a lot of this kind of buzz going on and he wanted this to be a really big thing. Uh, and he asked us, you know, would you like to take over running this kind of Friday night beers every Friday in East London and it moves around each week to a different bar. And what's the idea behind Silicon Drinkabout? It's basically the anti-networking networking event for startups. It's, it's, sort of, it's a bit like a, a bit like a roving pub crawl, I like yeah. to describe it as. We, yeah. we pick a different uh, venue every Friday, uh, be a pub or a bar or an office even. And we invite people from the tech community to come down and have a drink, basically. It's very simple. There's no complicated pitches. There's no format in that you know, people just come along and drink and chat, basically. But it's, yeah. it's targeted towards uh, people that work in startups, people that work in tech, right. and it, the only aim of it is to bring people together, basically. So we want to bring everyone together on a Friday night, share your war stories, have a beer, get pissed, and have a good time, basically. Yeah. The idea being that if you've got two or three people in a company and you've spent 70 hours working together in a week, the last thing you want to do is spend more time with those three people, but you might want to actually talk to other people who are in a similar situation. And I think that, that idea of just pulling people together around the Friday night beer uh, seemed to kind of take off in a way I don't think any of us mm. probably would have thought would have happened. And, and what sort of meaningful impact has this had? Has it actually kind of created anything or is it just a, is it just a standard British thing of getting drunk? No, over? That's, that, that's definitely my question. So um, my, my background's a bit different to these guys. Um, I was the CFO of an oil company um, and I decided that kind of corporate life wasn't for me. Can we, um, sorry, can we just, can you repeat what you used to do and then the audience can boo? Okay, yeah, okay. Can we have a big boo as well? Because um, <laughs> Yeah, I nearly said something really bad then. Um, I was the CFO of an oil company. Boo! Come on. Nice. It nice. And I'm an accountant. Like, boo! Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what was I doing with my life? So I, I quit and the, the, I, I typed in Silicon Roundabout. I love tech. I worked for a tech startup before the oil company. And I thought, what do I do? Where do I go? First thing I find is Silicon Drink About. I go along. It's uh, in the kick bar, which is like a football themed bar, loads of kind of uh, foosball tables, it's awesome. Met a bunch of people, chatted to the guys, had a nice time, went back the following week. Um, and one time, I think uh, we drank a, a coffee shop out of beer and we had to move on. And I said to the guys, do you want me to help you find some new venues? And they were like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. 
So, uh, yeah. Because you'd, you'd fucked off to the government at that point. So. Yeah, you fucked well, right off yeah. the government. A bit later, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, all right. So, basically, one person officially had stopped selling their soul, and then I left, went and sold my soul for government in a belief of democracy. Eye for an eye. Yeah, yeah stupidly, <laughs> stupidly. And now here we are in, a, in, in, in the Imperial Palace. So yeah. it's kind of full circle, really, between oil, <laughs> government, and uh, imperialism. It's yeah. like, done well, I think. I think yeah, and just, just to put a bit of magnitude on it, this was uh, March last year. It was maybe 25, 30 people a week, and now it's... Like, it's been busy, like 200 people for the last couple of weeks. Mm, yeah. And it's, it's regularly 150 I every Friday night. That's the thing. So I, mean, I, did, I did ask the question, what has it actually done? What has it actually done? Yeah. I think so, it, yeah, so it brought me... That's what it's done. Steady, yeah, it's steady. Done yeah. Yeah. <laughs> steady, come on. It's one of, like, one of our events. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very similar, actually. Very similar, it? except for the... Day Less before. drinking. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, so I think people have definitely got jobs through it. People may have found, uh, you know, love at Silicon Drink about because it's not just about uh, companies and, and startups. It's about people, essentially. So it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle thing. Is that, is, is that what you're trying to kind of get at I here? Mean, we, you know, yeah. we, get, we get investors, we get designers, developers, business minds, all kinds of people coming together. And when you bring people together that often, that regularly, you, you do kind of force that serendipity a bit. And, you know, mm. it's sort of a bit of a chain reaction. Things happen. People get to know each other, and then when someone comes along and says, I need a developer, you know a guy from last week, and you can hook him up. So it's all about creating those connections, basically. That's what we're trying to do. You know? So why didn't you just, you know, like everyone else, just build an app? I mean, it sounds like there's, there should be an app for this, right? I mean, you know, why do I have to physically go and meet people? That sounds, that sounds not only annoying, but tedious. Because at the heart of what we do, we, we believe that more than any other industry sector, um, startups and entrepreneurs need more community support, more offline support. We started the wrong way around. We sort of started as the offline piece um, because we fundamentally believe that that community powers uh, both optimism and growth and opportunity, but also people connecting with each other. Um, as it got bigger, um, we now have quite a few people uh, coming down from across Europe. Um, when they arrive in London, I think it's sort of like if you're in startup, you want to know, okay, well, how the hell do I connect with the community? And this is when it started to become quite a powerful thing. So we, we realized pretty quickly that because of the way that we, we do things, and it's very, uh, very humble and very welcoming, a lot of people sort of come in and be from Europe, so I've just arrived from here or there, and I want to understand what's going on. On the back of that, we have people go home again and then email us. And now we run, so we run Silicon Drink about at the moment in London, uh, Copenhagen, Amsterdam and Manchester Manchester uh, every Friday um, that has happened literally as a result of people from those places who've been to the things in London and gone back and said look I want to kind of bring this here mm -hmm. I mean, and I think they, they see the benefit of, of what we do and they they can replicate that in their own city I mean it's not it's not a complex event to set up basically you just got to pick a pub tell people to come and drink you know that's that's the bare bones of it it doesn't require money there's no there's no ticket sales you know we, we yeah. ask people to sort of RSVP uh, using a, a little kind of nice system that um, s some of our friends have built uh, called Attending. Um, and that gives people a, a bit of an inclination about who's going to be there. And if they met someone and had a few too many beers and can't remember who they were, they can always check it afterwards yeah. and, and see. So, that's, that's so, so kind of fundamentally, every Friday in London, there is a place for startups from anywhere across the world to come together yep. and talk. Yeah. And you don't need to be but from London. You don't need to be East London. You don't need to have no. a beard. No, you don't have but to have it's, a beard. it's not even just startups. You get the kind of tech curious as well. You get you tech, tech, tech curious. Tech like curious. Like, 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 yeah, like I was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I had the good sense not to come in my suit, though. So yeah, <laughs> we've had people from massive insurance companies come along saying, yeah, we thought we'd kind of check this tech thing out, see what's going on. Yeah. Um, Pe uh, yeah. yeah. People that are working in banks that are great developers getting paid a ton, a ton of money but hate their jobs and mm. you know, feel like it's, it's just drawing their soul and they want to do something a bit more exciting and they come along to like, uh, dip a toe in and, okay. and see what it's all about. Okay. Sometimes it's not for them. I mean, you know, startup life, as most people probably know, you, know, you, you work long hours, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, but you know, it is for some people. It, you know, not easy for some people, but it's, it's the right kind of thing for some people. So, so it sounds like you've kind of built this kind of little sort of almost software piece that isn't actually code but, but but fundamentally human, that kind of face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. I kind of want to expand that analogy quite torturously <laughs> and carry on and say, like, you know, if there was an operating system for a, for a sort of startup community, what would that be? What would that stack look like? How, you know, if you're sitting, I don't know, somewhere in Yugoslavia right now, and there's maybe sort of six of you who do startups, different startups, how can you kind of create some sort of buzz, some sort of noise, some sort of sense of, um, I guess, pride and ownership in, in, in what you're trying to do? I 
I think there's, there's, there's a lot of different elements, but basically good people, good conversation, collaboration, good coffee and good beer. Good beer. Yeah. Just the, that whole social element, like bringing people together and discussing your ideas, whether, whether you don't, like, it, the, you've, you've got to release an idea to find out whether it's good. Um, and, and Friday night in a pub, hey, m maybe you want to put some chips on the fact that they're not going to remember it. But over a beer, you know, inhib inhibitions are a bit kind of, uh, you know, lowered. And it's just the best, it's the best way to do it. Just bring people together. Yeah. I mean, uh, and they, they will make their own uh, kind of collaborations from that. And I think, I mean, expanding on that, I, I think, you know, we never set out to be an events company and we never mm. thought we would be a startup events company. We just showed up and tried to, I mean, we literally had a, a very simple mantra, which was show up, be regular, be accessible and give a shit. And I think we did that week in, week out for nearly two years and this amazing community uh, grew. And we're, you know, we're, we're here now, which is, you know, still, I sort of wake up every morning and kind of wonder a little bit how it got that way. But I think, from my point of view, all we ever did was just try and do the right thing by the people. I think people in particular are your most valuable asset. And it doesn't matter if you're looking now, in the future, but community is where you go to find it, right? So this event and, the, you know, the guys behind Pioneers are absolutely phenomenal. Like we met, we met them, I think, in January. And I think what they built is absolutely phenomenal. We absolutely love what they do and, and totally... Uh, support them because they've gone out and done it sort of 17 countries, right? They're amazing. Mm. And I think a lot of the people in this audience will have had some, like, obviously had a lot of exposure to that brand. And I think for, from our point of view, you know, I, I always kind of come back to the thing that's like, just do the right thing. Like, just pay it forward. Be a good human is like our mantra. You know? well, what does that mean? I mean, you know, that's kind of like quite a philosophical point, right? Like, what does it mean if we're constantly staring at sort of the black mirrors of our soul and Facebooking our life? What does it mean to be a good person in reality? Because it sounds like basically, you know, I don't want to be rude. It's a bit of a piss up, right? But you know, is there more to it than this? There is. Well, so we've mm. we've got other events as well, um, which we haven't really touched on. So um, we've we do four events in total um, under our own umbrella. Right. Um, the, the weekly Silicon Drink about is probably the most well known event, I think, um, especially now that it's in a few more cities. But uh, within London, we've got um, a monthly event called Don't Pitch Me, Bro. What's that? Um, it's named after a, a famous phrase by Dave McClure, actually. Um, but it's sort of a, a focus group for startups, I like to say. Um, basically, we get along very early stage companies. So it could be a guy that's been working on a bit of code in his bedroom. Um, they get up on, on the stage and demo what they've been working on. So no slide decks, live demos, uh, show the product as a user would use it, and then get feedback from the audience. So we, we get people in, it's free to attend. Um, and they sort of pay with their voice, if you know what I mean. They kind of come in and they give the feedback to these guys. And because it's at that very early stage, it's very crucial feedback at that point for them to, to kind of take a step back, which yeah. is quite hard to do, I think, when you're working on a startup. So, so instead of lying about the up and to the left sort of, uh, yeah, it, sort of bullshit. Yeah, no, no up hockey graphs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, yeah. it's not about traction. It's not about trying no. to sell yourself. It's just no. about demonstrating a product yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what trying to find a, a problem or a solution or... I think people come with different um, sort of requirements, really. Okay. I mean, sometimes it's... It's uh, that they, they might be struggling with a certain part of the business, and sometimes it's just that they're not quite sure if it's, if it's worth pursuing. You know? I mean, okay. we've had people come along before where, um, <laughs> I don't want to drop any names here, but um, they've, they've, worked on a, <laughs> they've worked on a product which people have told them probably will not go anywhere. Right. And mm. speaking from personal experience, that's quite hard to, to kind of to see if you're working on something. You're so into it that you need that outside opinion for someone to tell you to, to either drop it or pivot or, so or is change it, is something? It, is it similar to the roasting that we saw kind of taking place today, or is it, no, no, is no. it kind so of? We, we have a very clear mantra with all our events, which is um, absolutely you, mu you must be constructive. There are what? enough opportunities to get slagged off in tech. We're not going to endorse that. That's just not against, that's against our beardy ethos. But um, we, built, we built Don't Pitch Me Bro on the back of doing uh, digital sizzle and drink about because people are coming to our events and pitching us. And although we can create the environment in which to help people, and we work really hard to do that, we can't help everyone all the time. So we were like, well, okay, well, we need to create an event that actually plugs that gap. So I, um, we, we've kind of always, I guess, thought about uh, is it kind of a, I was at an event with a sort of a Canadian female entrepreneur, and she said, you know, don't fall in love with your product, fall in love with your consumer's problem. And I think for us, we get those problems firsthand every single Friday night, every month. Mm -hmm. People come out to us and say, look, can you, do, you know, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Can you do this, that? Now, we work our asses off trying to do that, but I think Don't Pitch Bureau came from the fact that people need constructive feedback from a very, very diverse and talented audience. So 
the point of it was it doesn't have to be about your tech. It could be about legal, customer acquisition, marketing. It could be anything you want, as long as you tell us like four or five areas that you want help with. So it's, cr it's crowdsourcing sort of Crowd problems. Crowdsourcing, basically yeah. feedback and solutions. Okay, but in a nice way and, and not, again, again, well, in not with an in a constructive way, right? Like I think we, you know, we work, we absolutely work really hard to make sure that we're always supporting that community that's kind of okay. built around us. We're only as good as the people that show up to the events. And how, again, you know, kind of how do you, how do you do that? I mean, what does that mean? I mean, you know, it's very easy for, for people to just kind of say, look, you know, I can log in with Facebook and I can get this feedback. But what does it actually mean to kind of do this face-to-face -face interaction, a kind of perhaps a skill that's, that's, that's distinctly lacking increasingly? Well, I think, again, mentioning no names, so I'm not sure if it's public yet, but we had, uh, we had a person that came along with a very specific problem. Um, it was a particularly good product, in my opinion, um, addressed a, a, you know, a very real problem, and said, I can go this route, or I can go this route. I think I, I probably know which one is, is right, right, but I need, I need some feedback. And there was just, we just did a straw poll, show of hands. She took that route, and she's now got a whole bunch of funding and is, is kind of off and flying. Okay, and awesome. It, it, it's, not, it's not even necessarily getting the piece of device that tells you what to do. It's just that kind of affirmation that, yes, this is, I, I think I know what's right, but I've told these people, and actually, 90% of those think it's right as well, and that's what I'm going to do. It's just that little kind of helping hand to say, yes, do it. So we, there's kind of a, there's a, there's a sort of a, a Friday night, weekly sort of, this is where you can kind of come and talk about stuff, and then there's this kind of product demonstration and feedback session. Mm -hmm. yep. What else is there? So then we started, a few months ago, we started a, a, another one called Chew the Fat, which is, looks here. And Chew the Fat was kind of the event that I think when we began two years ago, I think we, we kind of really wanted, which was we take in two and a half years, um, all of a sudden, more recently, people have started returning our emails, which is really nice. So um, we get sort of VCs or high profile entrepreneurs from London and we put them on a stage and we get people in a room to be able to sort of hear their stories. We dig sort of deeper into that and the people behind the headlines. And then we give the audience a chance to ask those people questions. And I think for me, that's also another thing. That's the inspiration piece. And I think when we started this two years ago, I don't, again, I don't think we could have done it. But I, now, as it's gotten sort of bigger and bigger, and has momentum behind it, we want to find ways to continually um, add value back to the community that kind of supports us. So Chew the Fat is sort of our, our monthly kind of inspiration piece. And it's also a chance to have a beer with somebody that you normally might not get a chance to kind of access, you know, and, or you wouldn't get a chance to kind of just hang out with and ask a question and sort of talk to. And what's the value of kind of, of having these kind of, you know, super successful people talking to people who aren't successful? What does that mean for, for the people who are sitting there? I mean, but it's not, it's not know, these, these poor sods are having to do that anyway. I mean, they're listening to us. I mean, what, you know, how, what's the benefit there? I think, I think the difference is that the, these events and a lot of the web conferences, you know, they happen once a year, right? We want right. to fill that gap from January to December so that people have always got stuff they can do. And if we can sort of use whatever profile dubious as it might be that we have to bring those people from places uh, into uh, a community environment, then we'll do it. But it's, it's a sharing of knowledge as well, and it's not just successful people. We want people that have failed spectacularly as well, right. because there's a whole bunch of knowledge in, in failure. You know, fail, fail fast, do it quickly, rise again, move on. So you, you know? feel that there's a, there's a kind of, you know, in, in, ter in terms of building community, I mean, and as well as there is the physical putting together of people, mm. there is also a, a need to educate. There is a need for what experience yeah. and sort of uh, even experience success and experience failure to share down. Yeah, yeah. Abs Why? absolutely. So, so people don't repeat uh, the, 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 or fall into the pitfalls that a lot of startups fall into. You know, mm -hmm. Don't sit in your bedroom for six months coding something that you think is amazing, but when you go and show it to your friends, they all go, I don't get it. You know, Get out there, talk to some people, validate your idea before you write a line of code. You know? So you, you kind of believe, I mean, as a, as a core kind of beardy ethos, that, that almost kind of physically talking to people is better than, than maybe writing code. I, I believe and that's, quite, that's almost like a lean, a lean philosophy, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Kind of customer development is king, yeah? Yeah, and it's better than sending somebody a presentation in an email. You know, you can't, you can't convey your passion for something. It might be like an idea you're thinking, yeah, it could work, it might not. But unless you see that person's passion for what they want to do, if they've got the drive and the will to do it, then you're going you're gonna to see their, their drive and say, yeah, I think that can work with you. Yeah. Okay. That idea won't work with him because he doesn't like it. I think, I think the other thing is there's so many people. Like if I look around this room, we've probably got people that do investment, people that are founders, people that might be agencies, who have experience in branding. Like if you give all these people an opportunity to get together in a way in which they feel completely comfortable and actually enjoy, the amount of knowledge that you can unlock in a, in a, in a sort of a set, like an environment which you create is phenomenal. You just have to create it. And I, th I don't think we, we never did anything magical. We never did anything more than just give up the one thing that people don't have, which is time. 
I mean, we gave up our time to try and create those environments. And I think the amount of joint knowledge you get and the value you get by bringing people from various skill sets together to the startup world, especially now when it's so much more prevalent. I mean, everywhere there's, there's more attention and more focus on startups. We've all been let down by sort of the traditional institutions. The banks fucked us, let's be honest. So like, we may, now seems like a good time, right? Like we may as well at least try and make our own way. And the more attention that gets funneled into that, the more people from sort of, who have incredibly advanced skill sets, but not exactly from what I would call a core startup industry, are kind of coming in and sort of saying, how do I kind of talk to people and get involved? Or how do I, how do I kind of share that stuff? And people love talking about themselves if you know how to ask the right questions. So, you've got to drink about, chew the fat. Anything else? Don't pitch me, bro. Don't pitch me, bro. That's yep. a demo one, right? Demo one. Um, Anything else? Got, uh, I mean, how, how does someone kind of, you know, let's say you're, you're Joe and you, and, you, and you can't use Google, and I mean, obviously that would be a disaster and fundamentally you'd be fucked from the beginning and the get-go, but yeah. if, you, if you were somehow to be unable to use Google, maybe you're using Bing or Yahoo or some similar, oh, God. how would you get into this kind of startup space and how can you kind of be shown what's possible in a very limited amount of time? I think, like, going back to... To the, to the drink about, it's, it's created a sort of uh, doormat, if you like, mm. um, in the community. I mean, when, when someone rocks up to London, you know, we've got it quite good over there because there's such a thriving scene around East London, um, which, is, which is quite unique to, to Europe, I think. Um, and when people come to, to London and come to Old Street, they, they walk out the tree wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, don't know where to go. I mean, you know, places like Google Campus that have opened yep. up, you know, they're, they're great for co-working. People can rock yep. up and just grab a coffee, grab a table, and, and sit down next to other people. Um, but there's no, you know, there's no real kind of place to go, if you know what I mean. So I think creating that drink about has given people that place to go. And so it's almost like a front door to kind of yeah, be yeah, able that's to sort of get in. what we're trying to do with it, yeah. 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 And yeah. You know, we've seen that happen with, with Copenhagen and Amsterdam, launch, right. with launching drink about there a few months ago. Um, I was over in Copenhagen and, and Amsterdam their communities are a bit more spread out across the city. So whereas with London, we've got that high concentration in East London, over there it's all very spread out. So putting the drink about in that city creates a physical place for people to come and network and so meet each other. It acts as a kind of a focus, a kind of a magnifying glass, and it kind of lets yeah. people come in. So well, what, what, what are these poor people here who aren't in Amsterdam or Copenhagen or London or Paris or Berlin or the other kind of big sort of known startup scenes? How can these people here really create their own ecosystem. What, what would so, you recommend they do? So, I mean, so, so start something, just, just do, do something. Start what? Well, we are looking for people for Drink About. Right. Um, and in fact, there's a man over there from oh. Sophia. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, yeah, Sophia Drink Nick, About people, stand up. Which is gonna be, which is gonna be uh, starting soon, uh, in November. Cool. Yeah. Um, and it's not a difficult thing to do. It's just, you know, go to the pub, we'll send you some t-shirts. Use the brand, use the whatever kind of media presence we've got in, in, your, in your country, and use it to pull people together. Yeah. Or if you don't like us, do it yourself. Like, mm. it's, it's not a difficult thing to do. And it just, the more, the more people you get, I mean, Silicon Drink About when it started in London was five people. Yeah. It doesn't take any more than that to start something. Mm. And I think you know? also when we, when we started doing it in London, we had a, this problem, which I guess sounds a bit funny, which is that we wanted people to stop fucking off and going to the US. And now, in t like, the more I travel across Europe and go to startup events, it's like everybody has that problem. And I think, from our point of view, we, we want to sort of champion communities for what they are. And I think communities all need, communities all need heroes, right? So one, one big thing, if you have a successful startup, if you've raised funding, go put yourself out there and, and share that knowledge. It runs on people sharing the things they've done. And I think we all kind of have an obligation to kind of champion our, our local scene and be proud of what, what we're doing and try to keep people like, try and keep that scene growing by trying to keep as much of your business at home as you can uh, for as long as you can. Because I think that's what inspires people. People are inspired by others that have done and being able to ask the question, shit, I'm in this position and you've done this. What did you do when, when, when you were me? And I think continually being able to create an environment where that knowledge is shared is the most powerful thing that I think anyone can do really. The fact that we've tried to do it, only, I think it's just, uh, it makes us feel a bit sort of always quite humble. I don't think we ever forget where we're from. You know, we've got a PR guy, an accountant, and a web designer. I'm just some guy from the northeast suburbs of Melbourne. What the hell am I doing in the Royal Palace in Vienna? Like, I, I don't know. But I'm happy to be here, and I think I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm going to kind of keep getting as many people from Europe to kind of get on board and, and, and just make stuff happen, right? Like, you just got to do it. At the end of the day, you lose nothing by doing. 
I think um, I think we're being asked if we wanted to take any questions or yeah. if you like yeah. to. Yeah, happy to. Are there any questions about how we can kind of help or translate or share, spread any sort of anyone community uh, anyone engagement? Uh, get any beard tips? Got a lovely question at yeah. the front there. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. So if someone wants to do a silicon drink about in their city, how they contact you? Superb question. Um, there's, uh, a, there's a button on the website, um, siliconddrinkabout.com. Hit that button. Tell us where you are, um, who you are, and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. I mean, the, the one thing that we, we need to try and get across to people is that it's a big commitment to run one of these events or to try and grow your community. Like the, the biggest thing, as Bryce said, you need to give up is time. That's, mm. that's what we've given up for the last two and a half years of doing this every Friday, bar maybe five a year for, for Christmas and whatnot. But um, yeah, just get in touch with us. Um, like Stoyan sitting behind you, two rows behind there, he, he came along uh, in London uh, about a week ago, asked us if he could run one in Sofia in Bulgaria, and I believe that's launching on the 22nd. Yep, yeah. 22nd of November. Or just grab yeah. us after this. We'll be the three guys trying to avoid the November stand. It'll be they really are easy to be here. So, Don't uh, go on the internet if there's someone you can actually talk to. It's a waste of time for everyone. Just yeah. go and speak to them. <laughs> go come and find up. us. We're going to be around. One, come and talk to them. It's great. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> No more questions? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, well there are questions we're keeping people posted from the on beards, Slido. So. Yeah. Um, I take the questions, first one. Oh, questions from wow. the interwebs. It is, ah, interweb yeah. questions. Is anyone afraid that ideas get stolen? Yeah, we all are. Don't worry about it. It's fucking fine. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it, ideas are bullshit, right? Ideas are... Everyone's think, got ideas. Ideas are fun. They're fascinating. Especially... It doesn't it, matter if they get nicked. That's good. Take it. Steal other people's ideas. Make them better. In doesn't London, matter. though, there's a big mentality that no one really cares about you stealing someone's idea because it's about the execution, right? I mean, you can take someone's idea, but you can't take their execution, and that's, that's what's the, the biggest... No, customer point. feedback shouldn't be your key metric. Revenue should be your key metric. Like, the aim is to make money and make <laughs> yourself a job. That's the point of a startup. Yeah, but, Not but, to take money from an investor. That's meaningless. That's like a shortcut to trying to be successful. Yeah, but like, also... also um, we're, not, we're not like mentors. We, we are consumers. Everybody at Drink About are consumers. So you're not coming to, to get this mystical advice from these wise people. You're just, you're just getting yeah, advice from... Wise. You know, exactly. We're we might have beards, beards but it's, it's, we're not wise. Yeah. Um, yeah, I so just think make money. It, make time. money is quite easy. Just make yeah, money. Yeah, but the, yeah. Pay yourself. Do good. Do you know what I mean? Do no good. One, yeah. I don't think... In Europe, I get this kind of impression, right? We're constantly assessing ourselves against America, right? We're constantly saying, where's our billion dollar IPO? Yeah. Fuck that. Where's your job? Where's your mortgage payment? Where's the happiness in your life? Where is something that you're proud of, right? I know each of you personally very well. And you are proud of yourselves because you pay yourselves by doing what you love doing. And it's not about selling for a billion dollars or getting Peter Thiel to suck your cock. It isn't about that. <laughs> it's about making a life for yourself that you are proud of, that means something to you, that makes you happy when you get up in the morning. Yeah. That's wow. what it's about. And don't let investors or anyone else tell you it's about anything. If you want to build a company, build a company, employ people, because corporates are not going to do that anymore. Banks are not going to do that anymore. You have to make I the Europe that you want people. to be proud of. We all have to participate in this. We all have to play together. And I think wow. it's fucking important that we don't yeah. get lost in this Americanization of what it means to be European. We are not them, and I don't want to be them. If I, I wanted to be them, I'd get a green card and I'd go over there. We are different, yeah. and we are better through all of us working together. And I urge you very, very strongly to get something happening in your town Get people together, put them in each other, fuck Facebook, fuck Twitter, get people together, give them a beer and talk about it. Talk about your idea, come together, build something, test it, throw it out. Ben. It won't work, it will fall over, we're getting pulled <laughs> off, it fucking whoa, matters. Whoa, whoa, shut him down, it shut matters. him down, yeah. <laughs> He's out. There were great closing awesome. words, thank you very much, give it up for the three beards.